As soon as she started running was the moment the bear ran swiftly and caught her in its huge paws in no time. The story for today's video takes us to Canada's largest, coldest, and northernmost region, Nunavut, which is its tundra territory with a cold, remote, and craggy environment, home to 28,000 Inuit people. Many tourists are fascinated by the weather conditions and the locals' way of living here. It gained fame due to its frigid temperatures and is a popular place to catch a glimpse of the northern lights and spot unique animals such as narwhals, seals, walruses, beluga whales, and the most anticipated and feared of them all, the ferocious polar bear. People who want to view a polar bear up close and in the wild frequently travel to Nunavut. Polar bears are considered residents of this place as they can freely roam in areas where they want to. However, they are hunted down by Nunavut hunters in case they would begin to attack people, as countless cases of polar bear attacks within this territory have been recorded ever since. Given that polar bears are the strongest, most powerful, and most aggressive of all bear species, there's no surprise that they would bring terror to the residents and even tourists of Nunavut. In this video, we'll feature a horrifying true story of a woman who got attacked by a polar bear while studying beluga whales in Pond Inlet, an Inuit hamlet within Nunavut. A wildlife researcher named Aldina Moore was sent to Nunavut with 12 other researchers to study beluga whales, the sea canaries of the ocean. Since she knew about them, Aldina had been deeply interested in learning about beluga whales and would grab any chance to see and check them out up close. Aldina was mesmerized by the sight of the surroundings as Yotimo and Hanta showed them some beautiful views along their motorboat ride. Aldina took countless photographs of the animals and sights she and the other researchers saw while sailing to their campsite. Upon arriving at their campsite near the coast, Yotimo and Hanta helped Adina and the researchers set up their camp. There were individual sleeping bags for all researchers, a huge research tent and a table to eat, and many boxes full of food, supplies, and gear, and other essentials needed for their research expedition to study beluga whales. After doing all the work and setting up their camp, Aldina decided they should all take a rest before setting up the net they'll be using to catch a beluga whale. Once they've finally seen one, they will only take intimate photographs of its body, take blood samples, examine its behavior, and possibly record clips of its sound. After half an hour, they will release the whale with no harm inflicted. Aldina went to Yotimo and Hanta to ask about the location's conditions and whether or not it caused any hazards while resting. Hanta told Adina that there were also tourists. They led to the camp and got home safely in no time. After hearing those, Aldina was convinced that the place was completely safe. However, Yotimo warned her immediately of polar bears. Polar bears are native to these areas, Yotimo began as he spoke. Our tourists might get home alive and safe, but they also got home scared and terrified because they saw a polar bear," he added. Confused, yet filled with curiosity, Aldina began to ask Yotimo some questions. Do you have any idea what happened to those tourists? Why are they so terrified of polar bears? What did the polar bears do to them? She asked. Yotimo sighed as he pointed out a spot at a distance and told Adina to look at it. He told Adina that it was where polar bears usually go and where tourists usually saw them at some point. Adina was quite surprised at how close the spot was to their camp. Hanta assured Aldina that the polar bears go to that spot to cool down or eat food they gathered from hunting in other parts of the fjord. As long as Aldina and the other researchers won't do something that may threaten or provoke them, they'll be fine. And again, Aldina was convinced that everyone would be safe if she stuck to what Yotimo and Hanta had said. After her conversation with the two Inuits, she told the others they should start setting up the particular net they made to catch one beluga whale. Another researcher named Evan decided to carry out the plan of getting the net into the water. Together with four other male researchers, they set up the trap before steering it into the water to drop it. Once the net had been dropped, Aldina told the other researchers that they should monitor it for 24 hours a day. And to do this, they should have rotating shifts every three to four hours. 
The other researchers agreed as they started watching the net for signs of a beluga whale. Aldina assigned herself to do the afternoon shift, to which most researchers agreed. She took a quick nap until one of the researchers woke her up when it was finally her turn to watch the net. She sat down on a portable chair with two other researchers named Rita and Nicholas and began their shift. While watching, the three of them casually talked about polar bears instead of beluga whales. The two were curious about how big a polar bear could get, while Aldina was slightly disturbed by the thought of seeing a huge predator up close. She told the other two that polar bears are highly aggressive and will not hesitate to kill. After the small talk, Aldina excused herself to go to a nearby spot as she saw two seals going to the coast. She quickly grabbed her camera and took pictures of the seals. It was a rare moment to see seals up close, and Aldina would never miss a chance to document them. Suddenly, Aldina felt something strange in her surroundings. She felt like something had been following her the entire time she's documenting the seals at the coast. She tried to look around and roam around the place to find out if something was following her, or if it was just her intuition. Aldina spotted what she was trying to avoid a polar bear. She couldn't determine if the bear was near or far from her, but she could only assume that the bear was meters away from her. Scared but still fascinated, Aldina slowly tried to take a picture of the bear when it suddenly started to walk towards her. Terrified, Aldina freaked out and decided to run for the camp, but it was too late. As soon as she started running was the moment the bear ran swiftly and caught her in its huge paws in no time. She had no idea that polar bears are this fast and quick when capturing their prey. Aldina began to scream as the polar bear immediately pinned her down to the ground and scratched her torso, causing excruciating pain. She tried squirming her body to escape from the huge animal, but it only caused her to end up lying on her back, giving more access to the polar bear to leave scratches and wounds on her body. Aldina once again screamed for help. The other researchers heard her this time and decided to rush to her. As the researchers were running to help her, the polar bear continued to claw Aldina's back as she was protecting her nape from being scratched despite the pain she's been feeling. After clawing at her for a while, the polar bear stopped and jumped on her body. It then stomped on her several times. When the researchers arrived at the scene, Evan brought out a rifle that he was given and aimed a shot at the polar bear. Due to the quick movements of the polar bear, it missed, but the rifle's sound was so loud that it immediately startled the animal. When Evan noticed this, he fired another shot beside the polar bear, which made it run away from them instantly, leaving Aldina conscious and wounded. They immediately called a plane to come and pick them up to take Aldina to Ikala, the only city within Nunavut, as it has a medical facility. There, Aldina received more than 400 stitches for her wounds and was provided with intense treatment to recover from her severe injuries from the polar bear attack. The research expedition that Aldina's team had been doing was canceled due to what happened. After the incident, Nunavut hunters came together at the place to hunt for the polar bear that attacked Aldina, so it won't harm any more tourists. Luckily, Aldina made it out alive and was on her way to recovery.